But we've talked about enthalpy for reactions, and we've talked about entropy, this new measure of disorder. And we've talked about how these two things are related. And now we're going to talk about how they are related together to give us whether or not a reaction is spontaneous. For, for measurement of whether a reaction is spontaneous or not, we can bring out another thermodynamic quantity, which is the Gibbs free energy, delta G. The Gibbs free energy sums up in one simple terse number whether reaction is um, spontaneous or not. Values that have a positive delta G are not spontaneous. Whereas values that have a negative delta G are spontaneous. Reactions that have positive delta G are spontaneous. So in many ways, this mirrors enthalpy. Delta H. When the enthalpy of a reaction was positive, or negative, it was when it was positive it was endothermic. Negative was exothermic. And so in many ways we can use them in a similar similar fashion, though it's not related to heat released. You can have reactions that don't release any heat that still have a positive delta G. And this is where the entropy comes in. The entropy is related to delta G. Traditionally, the units on delta G are kilojoules per mole. That the sum of the delta Gs, so the delta G of reaction, will equal the sum of the delta Gs of formation, the enthalpy of formation at standard state of the reactants, sorry, of the products minus the sum of the delta G's of formation of the reactants. Pretty much like we've all been seeing in the past. And also Hess's law still applies. Reactions, you can add two to three different reactions together and manipulate the, their delta G's, their free, en free energies in pretty much the same way. So. What this means is we can look at whether a reaction is spontaneous or not. H2O liquid going to H2O gas. We can turn to the back of our book and we can see that the enthalpy of formation, or sorry, the Gibbs free energy for water in its liquid state. Delta G of, for liquid water, delta G formation, again, just like the delta E of, delta G of, for formation of water, it turns out liquid water turns out to be negative 237.2 kilojoules per mole. And for gaseous water, delta G of formation for steam, is equal to negative 228.6 kilojoules per mole. And so if we take products minus reactants, so the delta G of the reaction would be equal to negative 228.6 kilojoules minus negative 237.2 kilojoules to give us delta G of reaction equal to plus 8.6. What this means is that we can use it to say that, yes, water does not boil. But we know water boils. So where's the, the, the discrepancy here? It turns out that this only applies under the following conditions. This is under standard state conditions. Delta G of reactions under standard states. So that means one atmosphere of pressure, 273 or 298, depending on which textbooks you read, 
Oh, this one actually uses 298. You're at 298 Kelvin, room temperature. One at one molar concentration. Now, this is important. This means that under standard state conditions, we can make predictions. This assumes that there is one mole of the products and one mole of the reactions present. And so this can directly impact our, our reaction behavior. But still, what this says is water does not boil at those temperatures. So it allows us to predict whether the reaction would take place at, at that particular temperature. Now, where does this free energy come from? What, is this, what does delta G actually represent? It turns out that besides this, the simple predictive nature of it that we can do at a given temperature, at 298 at least, it turns out that the Gibbs free energy, delta G, is equal to the delta H of a reaction minus T delta S. It turns out that whether a reaction is spontaneous or not is a product of the enthalpy, how much heat is released or absorbed, and the entropy, the disorder. And the disorder sort of scales with temperature. The more te higher the temperature, the more disordered it is. And so these two factors together allow us to calculate delta G. Additionally, what it means is because delta H and delta S are constants for a given reaction over a wide temperature range, we can use this as a quick estimate of what the delta G's relationship will be to temperature, whether a reaction will become spontaneous or not. We know water boils. It turns out that the boiling point of water is the temperature at which its vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure, but there's some there's some thermodynamic quantities associated with this. If we were to figure out the delta H of a reaction and the delta S of a reaction, which we can do from our tables, we can then predict the role of temperature on that reaction. So we could then change the temperature and predict at what temperature reaction becomes spontaneous. Some reactions are never spontaneous. If you take a look at what this means, we have this, this formula, this, this free energy equation. This free energy equation, if we take a look at it, it actually has some important consequences. Delta H has some important consequences. Delta H and delta S. Regardless of anything else, we can just look at the enthalpy change and the entropy change for a reaction and predict whether a reaction is going to be spontaneous or not. If the enthalpy was negative, an exothermic reaction, and the entropy was positive, sorry, and the entropy was positive, under these situations, delta G will always be negative, always spontaneous. doesn't matter what temperature we run it at, the reaction will always be favored. Some reactions, again, anything that increases the entropy, good. Anything that releases heat, good. And the converse is true. Exoendothermic reactions and things that have a um, negative entropy will always be positive and therefore will never be spontaneous. Lastly, we have situations where delta H and delta S are both negative. What this means is that at low temperatures, when T is small, at low temperatures, the reaction will be spontaneous. Where at high temperatures, it will be non-spontaneous because as the reaction increases, the entropy factor increases, entropy decreases, entropy decreases. This entropy value, this contribution due to entropy be becomes more positive. At high temperatures, that contribution to the entropy becomes 
more positive because it's negative plus a negative times, sorry, negative times a negative, making it more positive, making the delta G small and no negative. So at high temperatures, the reaction will be non-spontaneous. Some reactions actually, when you heat them up, they actually stop working. Now what this means is there sort of suggests something that's hidden in this is that reactions can switch from a spontaneous concept, one where the forward reaction takes place, to a non-spontaneous, where the backward reaction is spontaneous. Well, we've seen this before. The temperature at which it switches from one re regime of spontaneity to the other is the equilibrium temperature. So during at an at equilibrium, the delta G, a system at equilibrium, delta G will equal zero at equilibrium. There's the free energy change between the products and the reactions is zero. And the fact that it is zero means that the reaction can proceed in either direction equally, spontaneously. So in these types of situations, these are usually where we see this shift from spontaneous to non-spontaneous. Another thing is when we switch from one regime of spontaneity to the other, these are usually what phase changes, melting, and we can use that fact that it goes from solid to liquid or liquid to gas in an equilibrium setting. When, when ice is melting, it's always at the same temperature, it's at equilibrium, to predict, to find these temperature changes using this equation.